Okay, this is the uh, last video for chapter one. This is some material about object-oriented programming that is not in the book, but is always uh, usually covered uh, for a good introduction to object-oriented programming. And so we have two main topics. Uh, the one is uh, we're going to call composition versus inheritance. So we've just shown you inheritance and I have inheritance here as an example. So suppose we have a date time class that can create objects that represent a date and a time. So internally they store the year, month, day, hour, minute, and second. And then if we want to say make a calendar where we represent events on the calendar, we might have a name for the event that we add but we can just derive it from date time so an event is just a specific date time with a name associated with it uh, which would be the name of the event. Uh, so that's inheritance but whenever you do inheritance you should also think about another choice which is called composition and the example on the left is composition so we still start out with date time but when we make a new class we decide not to inherit from date time but just include uh, when the date is as a member, an instance variable, as part of the event. So here uh, the event object has a date time as an instance variable and in this case over here event is a date time type. So it just extends it as a subclass. So this is always a choice when you you can always do uh, just the object as a member of the new uh, type of thing you're creating or you can inherit from the thing. Now when would you use each? So first of all this is called a has a relationship this is called an is a relationship. Uh, so they're related uh, but in different ways. So the question is if you do an event on a calendar is that really considered a date time? And you could argue that maybe it is and maybe it isn't. So how closely the statement that this is a date time is whether you should do inheritance or not. Uh, for composition they don't have to be closely related. It just has to be useful that an event has a date time as part of its data inside the object and then that then you would do the has a relationship. When you're actually designing object order programming uh, you if you have a lot of different objects and they all have a common property that's something you might consider as uh, making that a superclass of several objects. And we're about to look at something like that, uh, which is a very strong relationship. So is a is an actually stronger relationship uh, than has a. It's a little less strong in terms of uh, the connection between two different objects. So now the last example, we're going to talk about the concept of polymorphism. So polymorphism relates to uh, you tell a bunch of objects to do the same thing even though they're apparently different types of things. A good example of this is in the uh, whenever you do inheritance uh, from the object class you inherit this uh, string uh, method. So the string method is inherited from the object class automatically so when you can create any number of objects and you can you can be guaranteed you can call string on them because they're already defined in the object class it won't give you an error and say string is not defined so that means that any object you have you can tell it to convert itself to a string uh, using the str and in parentheses you put the object in it and it will convert itself to a string and return something uh, so that's an example of polymorphism uh, we're going to look at a, a made-up example I called the barnyard example. And what we have here is we have a superclass which is called animal. And remember, in superclass is always more abstract than the subclasses. And in some cases, it's so abstract it's not useful by itself. And we'll show you what we mean here. So we have uh, animal as the superclass, and then I indented a bunch of subclasses that are all going to der be derived from animal. Now, animal will have a name as a uh, as a instance variable and it will have a method you can call called speak. And then cow, pig, and cat will also have speak so you can see that speak is common to everything and this will have to do with polymorphism. But cow has some special methods. It has chew and cat has purr which the pig doesn't have and the cat doesn't chew and the cow doesn't purr. 
So when we look through here, here's the definition of animal. So it, it has, and I've, this just shows you a short way of doing it. Whenever you do a, a one statement for a body of something, uh, you can put it on the same line like this. So the init method will uh, set the name of the, of the uh, instance variable for animal. And when you call speak, it returns a period because it really, an animal is too abstract to have a sound. So I just put period, meaning it doesn't know what it's saying. And we'll show you the, the code I wrote a little later. I even abstracted the name. Uh, and then we have string, which returns the name and what it says. And then we have get name, which just returns the name. So these are some common things. So because all these other methods are derived from animal, they will have uh, speak, string, and get name all common to them. Okay, now cow is is implemented from animal, so it's a it's a subclass of animal, so it automatically gets the speak and the string and the get name. Uh, so the init for cow, uh, there's nothing new for it to do, but it does have to call the super init, so it passes the name to the super initialization method, and then it defines this unique thing just for cows that. Uh, that chew, so it says munch munch, um, and then it has, and then it uh, redefines speak. So there's a unique speak for cows. It's, it returns moo. So you'll see in pig, it, we also define speak, and it returns oink oink. And for a cat, when we call it the speak, it says meow. Okay. So, but you also notice for cat, we have another method called purr, which none of the other object types have. Uh, which prints per, and so there we go. We have a barnyard. We have some methods that are unique to the animal, and we have the speak method, which everyone has. So this is useful because you can make an array, or in, in Python terms, a list, and we can create all these objects of different types and mix them all together. So I have one cat named Puss, an animal named Sloth, a cat named Spot, a pig named Babe, and a cow, two cows, Betsy and Jackson. And so you can write a loop that loops through this list and ask them all to convert themselves to a string and print themselves. So they would print this out. So you can see that speak works perfectly. It's You're calling the same method across supposedly a bunch of different types of objects and that's the whole idea of polymorphism. And we do this because they have a common ancestor in this case where animal uh, defines speak, so anything derived from animal will automatically have be guaranteed to have speak. Uh, so let me go to my example and I'll introduce one more idea. So I have the same thing here, I just refined it a little bit since I did it last semester. So instead of a period I put a question mark for, for when a animal speaks because it doesn't know how to speak. And uh, now for, and then cow pig and cat are the same as the example and my array is a little different I for animal I don't give it a name I just put in a bunch of dashes and the I renamed this cow Bo so we have the cows are Betsy and Bo and the pig is Babe and the cat is Spot and the other cat is Puss and so we loop through the animals and we'll see it does the same thing as similar to what the example in my other one is uh, the only difference is the animal now obviously doesn't know, doesn't have a name and it doesn't know how to speak, but it does do the method speak and it outputs the, that information. So let's look at something else. Let's, spot, let's suppose we ask all the animals to purr. What will happen? So I'm going to modify this and I'm going to ask each animal. So I'm going to say A, print A, uh, let's see, per, what is per? Per does a print, so we don't need to do a print. We're just going to, for every A in animal, A dot per. And what do you think is going to happen? Well, you can think about that for a minute. So let's go ahead and run it, I'll show you what happens. So we get an error. It says attribute error, animal object has no attribute per. So it prints the cat, so that purrs, and you'll see it says purr here, and then it calls animal object to tell it to purr, and it gets this error. Uh, so this is an example of not having polymorphism, 
where you have a bunch of objects and you're calling a method on all the objects and some of the objects don't have that method. Uh, so is there a way we can make at least make this to work? So what we want to do is as we loop through we only want to ask animals to purr if they can do that. If they can't do that maybe we we'll ask them to speak or something else. Uh, so let me go back to um, the uh, IPython thing we have. So I did the same example here with purr and you'll see it gives you that error. And the error in IPython is a little, uh, there it is, animal object has no attribute purr. So it's the same error. So what you can do is use a special built-in method in Python called isInstance. Is this ask is a an instance of the class cat. And if it is, then you know it can purr. So if A is an instance of class cat, it prints the name, followed by it tells it to purr. If it's not, it does the else, and it prints the name, and it says it can't purr. So let's copy this code. So you can see that you can use in, is instance to check if something is an instance before you run it. So put that in there. And what you'll see, you will run it. So it gets the name of everyone. It says uh, Puss Purr, uh, an animal which is no name, can't purr, Spot purrs, Spot's a cat in this case, uh, Babe can't purr because it's a pig, and Betsy and Cow Bow can't purr. So is instance can check if a variable you are passed in uh, is an actual instance of something you're expecting. Now when you do the fraction class, it's optional, but you can check if when you're adding two fractions together that the other fraction you're passed is an instance of a fraction because you may not even want to try adding them together if it's say an integer or a string. So what you do is you check if is instance uh, the number you were passed in, the other uh, fraction, and if it's not, you, what you're basically going to do is test if it's not, uh, you would raise an error. Uh, so there's an example of that. Uh, so this is it. This concludes the videos for chapter uh, one and we'll be working on the videos for chapter two.